good day everyone. In this video I shall demonstrate how to download and install WAMP server software on your local machine. WAMP server software is very good for developing PHP applications because it saves you the hassle of having to transfer files to a production server each time you make a little change. And also you can display very helpful debugging information of what that would not be appropriate on a production server. So first things first, you want to navigate to wampserver.com and scroll down to the download section and click the link to download the correct version. So if you're running Windows 32 bit, then you'll download you'll click on the one on the left. If your machine is 64 bit, then you'll click on the link on the right. When you click on the link, a pop-up will appear and you want to look for the part that says download directly and click on that and you'll be redirected to source tools and the download should start automatically after a few seconds. It's downloading here. Once the download is complete, you're going to want to navigate in the um, Windows Explorer to your downloads folder. There's one I downloaded earlier, and you want to double click on the executable. I've already done this, so I'll skip this step, but I will go through what you can expect to see. You'll see a few pop ups, so just click yes and OK and leave the defaults for them. You will have the option to add a desktop icon, which I would suggest you do because it makes it easy to access WAMP quickly. And all the other settings leave as the defaults. You'll see one that about uh, the PHP mail function. I personally do not send emails from my local development machine, so I don't really bother with that. But if you do, then you know you'll have to maybe read another article on setting that up because that is out of the scope of of this tutorial. Now that WAMP is downloaded and installed, we can start setting up some websites. Uh, one of the first things I like to do is to pin WAMP to the taskbar. So I click the Windows button, then search for WAMP, then right click WAMP and click pin to taskbar. This just makes it even easier to start up WAMP because it's right there for the trigger. So once you've done that, double click on the icon to start up WAMP. Start up WAMP. And once this has started, we want to, in the Windows File Explorer, we want to navigate to the WAMP folder, which is here. And we want to, um, actually, first things first, go to your browser and navigate to localhost. Now, this should bring up uh, the WAMP default web route, which is here. So WAMP then www dot and it's this file here that we use it's index.php is the proper release name and it just has a bit of information about the version of Apache and the version of PHP etc. So this is our this is where our local host is going, but we want to set up server websites. So to have multiple websites running, you need to use the virtual host file. So we go back to our WAMP folder, then we go bin Apache Apache 2.4.9 and conf, and we will open up the file named httpd.conf in our chosen text editor. And the line we are interested in is number 512 virtual host. This line here underneath where it says virtual host which reads include conf slash expert slash httpd.vhost.conf. We need to make sure this line is uncommented so we can make use of the virtual host file. So once we've made sure that this line is not commented out, we will go back to our Windows File Explorer and go into the extra folder and look for the file named httpd hyphen vhost.conf and open that file up in our chosen text editor. 
this is where the actual virtual host blocks are. And first, we will set up the default for local host because once we make use of this, we need to actually physically point local host to where we want it to point to. Whereas if local host is the only domain you want, you can then point to the web root automatically. But because we're setting up multiple websites, we need to actually specify where local host blocks are going to be pointed to. So for that, we only need two lines in here inside the virtual host block. The first one will be the path to the default web root, which is C drive WAMP forward slash www and we will set up where we want the error log to be and for me I put it in C drive WAMP log and I name it error.log you can put it wherever you want really as long as it's outside of the, the web route then that's fine so I'll remove this bottom one for now because that isn't necessary and we need to look in the host file as well. The host file is a window file. It's located in the C drive, Windows, System32, Drivers, etc. and this name host. And this is where we map the main name to the local IP address. As you can see, local host is already set up in here. So that is fine for now. Because we've made this change, we will restart WAMP. Because when you make the change, you have to restart WAMP. So it picks up the new settings. So I'll put restart all services. I shouldn't say it's going to restart. Yep, that's restarted. So now I should still be able to navigate to local host. Yep, okay. So now we've set up, we'll move on to setting up the website now. navigate back to our text editor and we're going to add another virtual host block so I'll copy and paste this and for this one we need to add a server name which will be the domain name and I'll use local.websites as an example and we'll make it point to WAMP www slash website and we'll leave the same error log because I used I use one error log for all of the websites we need to make sure that local.website is in the host file and as you can see it already is in here in the host file so we'll just click ok and save the virtual host file and once again restart WAMP that's restarted which should So it's already here, you can see website and it's got text boxes and stuff in it. So now I should be able to navigate this back to my browser. Yep, and it's worked. This is pointing to this folder here in this file here. Next, I shall set up one more website. So I'll navigate back to my text editor and I once again will copy and paste this and I'll name this one local.websites which will point to the websites directory and again I'll leave the same error log I'll make sure that local.websites exists in the host file which it does right here and I'll make sure that there's a folder for websites in my uh, root web directory and it is here so once again, restart WAMP. That's restarted successfully and in my browser, I'll navigate to local.website. And yes, now this is pointing to here and this file here. So before I before I end this video, I want to show you one more thing, which 
this is this is all we need for our virtual host block because the web directory that we're pointing to is inside the WAMP folder. But if for some reason you wanted to point to a a directory that is not inside the WAMP folder, first of all I wouldn't suggest this, but if there's a good reason to do it, you'll have to add something else and I'll just show you why. If I navigate to a different folder, for example, uh, I'll navigate to this folder here, which is in the Windows Documents folder directory. So if I set that up here, let's try that again. Here, save, restart WAMP. Virtual browser, refresh. See, now it says forbidden because WAMP does not have access to this directory. So I'll go back to my host file, virtual host file, I mean. And I need to add one more thing, which is a directory block. So I can open or close directory tag, copy the path to the directory here, and just type the title Raspberry Bridge Permission, permission which WAMP permissions that directory. And then I'll restart WAMP again. Yep, that's all right. Now I'll refresh, and now we can see this website because we've given WAMP permission to the directory, the, this bit here. So if the website is in the same directory or is inside the default web root for WAMP, then this is all you need, the server name, the document root, the error log. But if it's an external directory, as in it's not a directory which is somewhere within WAMP, then you need to add this directory block to give it permission to give one permission to view what is in that directory i will end the video here if you if anything i've said have confused you or you've got a question you want to ask feel free to leave a comment and i'll get back as soon as possible until next time take care